Hello, this is Sanat here, back in our Transformers review. Today I'll be taking a look at the Transformers Age of Extinction Deluxe Class Dinobot Slug. Alright, so here we have Slug, one of the first Dinobots to be released for the Transformers Age of Extinction toy line. Now, if you don't know, Transformers Age of Extinction is the fourth live-action Transformers movie to be released uh, this year in 2014 in June. And we have our first toys have been released uh, for the first wave. Now, I will be picking up mainly Dinobots, probably nothing else, because I kind of burned myself out with the last three movies. Um, but anyways... That being said, we are starting with Slug, because in the Transformers numbering series, he's 003, while the other one, other deluxe I own is 004. Um, anyways, moving him aside real quick, the packaging is really neat. Um, I do like it quite a bit. It's smaller than your standard packaging. Uh, mine's been a lot of the Beast Hunters packaging line. It's very square, very simple, but you do have images, like concept art of Slug in dino mode and then robot mode in the front. And then there's a brief bio. It says it changes in 16 steps. Uh, plus it shows the other deluxes in Wave 1. So really nice packaging overall. It's a nice uh, look to it. Probably going to get sick of seeing it though as... Well, you get sick of seeing movie toys on shelves after a while. That being said, will we get sick of seeing this guy? Probably because he's a Wave 1 movie toy. Um, they usually stick around for a while. So we have a Triceratops with extra horns and spikes. Uh, but that being said, Slug is supposed to be a Triceratops based off the Generation 1 Slag. Um, but that name just doesn't seem to work anymore because he was Snarl in Animated and Slag is a slang term in some countries. So, he is Slug. Um, kinda don't like the name, but what can you do? Now he is a small Triceratops. He is quite tiny. Um, the new retail price for the Deluxe Class Transformers is $15, and this guy does not feel like a $15 toy. Um, really, he is quite light. He is a little small. I mean, you can, like, hold him in your hand. Um, he's really smaller. He, he's shorter than a, a Legacy Power Morpher. Uh, let's just go with that. So, anyways, he's kind of on the small side in Dino mode, but he does surprisingly turn into quite a large robot mode. Um, now, taking a look at the design, he is purple uh, on the toy, and I do like this because while in the movie they look to be all gray, and that's kind of boring, honestly, and when looking at a shelf, I don't want, like, a bunch of gray Dinobots. It will look boring uh, just to have everyone the same color. This gives them each a distinct color. Grimlock is gold, Scorn is red. Slug is purple, Slash is green, Strafe is blue, so on and so forth. Um, having these distinctive colors, you can tell who is who just based on their color scheme. Plus, it makes me think of Kyoryuja and their colorful dinosaurs. Um, but this one is purple, not pink or blue, so yay. Anyways, uh, for a dino mode, he's got a ton of spikes, which does kind of break up the Triceratops look um, with all these spikes on his tail. Starts classifying him as a different dinosaur, but we're just going to go with Triceratops for simplicity's sake. But, really cool overall. I do love the dino mode. I think it does look quite ferocious. You can open his mouth, and he's just got rows of razor-sharp teeth. Uh, he's got spikes on his jaw. They're pretty neat. The articulation for this mode is abysmal. Uh, you can move his, his uh, legs out, and they bend here, and they move forward a little bit. That's about it. Um, his back legs, if you have them pegged in, which they're supposed to peg into these, a lot of the versions really don't. I like leaving them loose because it does give me some wiggle room to move the legs and the feet around um, just a bit. But that being said, Slug is a convincing Dinobot in his Dino mode. Um, he is a convincing Triceratops. That is until you have his weapons. He has these two swords. Now, the official storage method for these swords is right in the sides of Slug. You just stab them in, and now he's the killer Triceratops. You can have him point the blades this way, 
and then just like run and just slice things while he's running. Which admittedly is a great concept, but it does look a little silly with these giant wing swords on him. With that being said, let's take a look at the robot mode. Alright, so transforming slug in a simple 16 steps, like the packaging says. Not simple at all. Actually, there's quite a bit of complication to it. First, let's get these swords out of the way. Now, the easiest step of this whole thing, you flip this tail closed. Now, even though there's a hinge here, it doesn't actually fold up any further. That'll become a problem later. The legs extend in an interesting manner in that they extend this way, with the toes flip or the claws flipping that way and a foot coming out that way. So this nice flip change is my favorite part of the transformation, actually, because the rest of this is such a mess. So, we begin with the dinosaur legs. Uh, first, you need to split these panels open and bring them around. Get these dinosaur legs away uh, from everything else, and they'll end up popping off a lot. They just need to get back here and so they can be folded away. Now that's set, you want to fold down the Triceratops head like this and split it in half, and now everything is going to open up like this. So the tricky part is that these, these red panels are going to get in the way quickly, um, but you just need to get everything positioned. These panels do fold in. And now comes the tricky part. This is the part that took me a while to figure out how it worked. And that is these legs bend here, and tab into these little slots here. So you want to have this shoulder fully extended to where it clicks into place and then just kind of wedge the purple tab into the gray hole. Um, lining it up is extremely tricky and if you don't do it just right it won't go in which it's not doing right now. Um, the trickiest part about this guy is that the transformation is very specific. You have to do it perfectly or else it doesn't work. And that's quite a problem as with transformers in the past when you have something like that the joint tolerance don't always agree. You also want to flip the hands out and close these up. Or you can close them up and flip the hand out. Your preference. And just kind of set everything down and put it into position. And now we got Slug in his robot mode. So, Slug's robot mode is pretty awesome. He, a lot of the Dinobots follow this medieval knight look that I really like. And that really starts with the head sculpt here, which looks just like a knight's helmet in the traditional sense. He's got a blue visor in there that isn't light piped, unfortunately, so it doesn't shine through very well. But you can tell that the knight design is there. He also has what looks like armor all over the place, like he killed a dinosaur and wore his armor, which is really neat. Now, we have not got confirmation that any of the Dinobots transformed in the movie, um, and it's very possible with the way that the live-action Transformers movies go, we will never see this robot mode in action in the, on the, the big screen. Um, but, that being said, if that is not the case, this is still a cool toy. Now, a few minor complaints. Uh, with the transformation, I mentioned how these dinosaur legs have to be tabbed in perfectly. But when they do, they do move out of the way for leg articulation and such. And the, really the only complaint I have is this back flap thing. There is no way to get this to fold up any better. Uh, you can do this, so there's like more stuff above his head. But it ends up, this is the best place for it, and there really is no other place for it. There's also a peg in there that does nothing. And I don't know why. Anyways, that being said, he is quite articulated. Uh, his head is on a ball joint, which works very well. It can look down uh, quite a bit and turn left and right, which is nice. He's got shoulder articulation, he's got outward shoulder movements. Um, it's a ball joint, so it does move, and these shoulder pieces do kind of move out of the way. Uh, you got a bicep swivel. Good job, Hasbro. Maddie Collector's 4-inch figure can't do that. An elbow joint, a wrist uh, pivot. He's got a waist joint that actually works, which is nice, um, unless you fold that up. Ball, by, uh, ball joint hips, thigh swivel, knee, extra knee that looks weird, and you can position the, the, the toe a bit. Now that being said, what the articulation is all in these mushroom cap pegs, which means all those joints can come off at some point uh, if you use too much force. 
which does lead to a will this still thing things still be stable in ten years? Now the swords, which you can give to him, do have a slight design flaw. Um, you think that with the way they're designed, you would want this side out, but then it pokes that in to where they only really fit in his hands when they're backwards. This happens so much with, with sword weapons on action figures that I've seen, and it really is kind of dumb that you can't position it the other way without it sticking up um, and bending things. But if you want, you can kind of go for this direction, which seems to be the best bet when working with slugs' swords. That being said, getting him in wide-legged, sword-wheeling poses is really tricky because of all the dang joints in his knees uh, for the transformation. And you end up looking, he's like squatting, which is kind of weird. Uh, the legs are kind of oddly designed in that they're curved and very awkward. But when you do get Slug all transformed and posed for battle, he does look pretty neat. Now that being said, how is the figure overall? Well... Overall, the dino mode is less articulated and least impressive out of all three that I own so far. And the robot mode does have some limitations just in design as well as uh, clutter around his head. But that being said, I do like the figure and would recommend it to uh, Dinobot collectors. But if you are going for only one deluxe of this line, this is not the one to get. Uh, as there have already been a better deluxe and more coming out. Uh, in the future. Now that being said, he's still recommended to those trying to collect the Dinobots, and it's still a decent figure, just not quite spectacular. So with that anyways, be sure to check out HeroTaga.com for all your Transformers news and more, and be sure to stay tuned for more Transformers Age of Extinction reviews, only on SoundOut12. Talk some SoundSight. Goodbye.